you're having a great day today. We're so glad that you've joined us uh, for this time of worship around whatever part of the Fall Branch and I met at this church table you happen to be sitting around today. Uh, because the numbers uh, for COVID, both testing percentages uh, positive as well as the actual 14-day case rate has been so high and it just still seems to be climbing in our area, uh, we are all online instead of online services as well as in person. Uh, we've chosen to go all online uh, to do that Wesleyan principle of do no harm and to do good as we also stay in love with God. And so whatever part of the Fall Branch table you happen to be sitting around today, we are so glad you're here. Uh, I hope that you have a copy of the worship guide. If you don't have one, uh, you can find it at dgtully.tumblr.com uh, to help you participate because we don't want just people to watch and observe and consume, but to participate. We all have the opportunity to be worshipers here today in the prayers that we offer, in the confessions of faith we make, in the historic traditions and creeds of the church, in the opportunity to listen, open and listen God's to God's word together. And I hope that whatever part uh, is meaningful to you, that God will speak to you. I, I know that you're here for a reason today. Uh, we've been praying for you to be with us, to join in this time. And so I ask that you would give your full allegiance and your full, all that you can muster of yourself to this time and all that we say and that we do together. And a little bit later when we have our prayer time, we do ask that if you have a prayer request that you write it in the comments uh, below in, on Facebook uh, so that we can share those together and, and pray together. I just want to say hi to a few folks who are joining us today. Uh, uh, Glenda and my wife Lynn and Frederick and Xavier is over here. You can't see him. I haven't got the camera turned around. Uh, but we've also got Glenda and, and Barbara and George uh, and I believe Miss Debbie Craft all the way from, if I'm mistake, not mistaken, from Georgia. If I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure that's right. Isn't that right, Debbie? But, and then there's Kay uh, who's joined us also this morning and Priscilla and Gus and, and Terry and, and, uh, and all the way from just across the line in uh, Mississippi from, from Nashville, uh, Helen has joined us too. So I want to say welcome and then glad you're here with us today. And so as we begin this time of worship, uh, have your worship guide, have your Bible, uh, and have some bread and some wine or juice in a cup as we will consecrate together Holy Communion to share. And so let's begin this time with our call to worship. If you would, read aloud wherever you are the words in bold on the screen. Let us bless the Lord from this time forth forevermore. Hallelujah. I cry out to you, O Lord. I say, you are my refuge, my portion in the land of the living. I will confess you among the peoples, O Lord. I will sing praises to you among the nations. For your loving kindness is greater than the heavens, and your faithfulness reaches to the clouds. Let's pray together. Lord of mercy and abundant love, we've gathered together this day to hear your healing words of compassion and to be transformed by your love. Help us to become more faithful servants in our thoughts, our words, and our deeds. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, friends, now let's listen to our word from Scripture today from the Psalms in the Old Testament, Psalm 130. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplications. If you, O Lord, should mark iniquities, Lord, who could stand? But there is forgiveness with you, so that you may be revered. I wait for the Lord. My soul waits, and in his word I hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than those who watch for the morning. More than those who watch for the morning. O Israel, hope in the Lord, for with the Lord there is steadfast love. And with him is great power to redeem. It is he who will redeem Israel from all its iniquities. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. And friends, now let's, let's make our confession of faith as we say together the Apostles' Creed. The words will be on the screen. I ask that we recite this together. And as we do so, let it remind you that it is not just a nebulous, abstract idea of divinity or a, a sense of spirituality 
that we gather together to worship today, but it is the God that we know in Jesus Christ, the one true and living God in the power of the Holy Spirit. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the one true and living God that is revealed to us in Scripture. And so now let's make our confession of faith as we recite together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Well, friends, now we have this opportunity to come together, uh, even here online, to worship God and to offer ourselves, including our needs, our praise, and those things that we've been blessed with in prayer to God. Prayer beyond just being a grocery list. Prayer is primarily a way of communicating and listening to God, of allowing ourselves to be opened up so that we can be shaped and formed by God. And we do that best in community as we're going to pray now. And so in order to help us all participate more and to, to lift our true needs uh, to God, I would ask in the comments that as the following video plays that you write in the comments just below in Facebook, uh, those prayer requests, those needs, or those praises as well that you want us to lift up together to God. And so let, right now, uh, put those uh, prayer requests in the comments. Okay, uh, you've, we've had time to uh, share our prayer requests with one another. Uh, and each week also we put out for our church membership a uh, copy of a prayer needs list for that week. Uh, and if you'd like to have that, you can email uh, and just put us a note, send a message on our Facebook page below, uh, and we'll send that out to you as well if you'll provide us with your email address that you'd like us to send it to. Uh, Tanya today has said that uh, we want to pray for those involved in a, uh, an accident on Interstate 81, just from us, wife from us. And he came one in Chanya. That's my wife, Lynn. She's looking at me right now with Chanya. Who's Chanya? My wife, Lynn. Uh, there was an accident involving uh, multiple vehicles and, and large tractor trailers, and there were some injuries. We want to pray for those folks. Uh, Helen has asked to pray for her son in law, Gary uh, Henson, who is having uh, cardiac heart difficulties. Uh, Priscilla wants us to pray for Shelly, uh, who is suffering from breast cancer and uh, has undergone radiation and, and surgery treatments. And Kay is asking us to pray for a neighbor. 
And so for all those uh, prayer requests and for others that we may uh, know of but have not <coughs> mentioned, let's go to the Lord now uh, in prayer. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, for you alone do wondrous things. Blessed be your glorious name forever, and may your glory fill the whole earth. O great and glorious God, your ways are filled with mercy and justice. In every act you bless us with goodness, and you call us to honor you. But so often we do so only with our lips. And instead of worshiping you, we take the ways of this world and conform ourselves to them. We leave your commandments and hold fast to that which is most convenient. This morning we ask that you would search our hearts, Lord God, root out every evil thing that defiles us. Make us anew into your image, that your love may once more call us away from darkness and death and into your light and life. Father in heaven, we know that every good and perfect gift comes from you, and by the power of your Holy Spirit, draw us toward your truth, that we may bear fruit of truly hearing and doing your word. Father, you've called us to care for those in need. And so we bring before you now the concerns of our heart, those that have been mentioned aloud and those that we hold uh, close still. Go with us as we bring your hopeful and, and healing grace to all those you bring before us and who are committed to our care. For those who are suffering in sickness, we pray that you would bring your healing touch. Lift the heavy burden of those weighed down in heart and mind. Provide what each of us need this day. And in the midst of chaos and suffering that's all around us in our world, Lord and God, bring your peace. Calm the storm. And may your way of order reign. Protect and empower those in particular in this time who seek and promote your kingdom in its ways, standing courageously and lovingly for the good news of Jesus. God, you are the God of the last and of the first and of all those in between. We pray that you would hear our concerns as we seek your presence in our lives and in a world that is so very much in need. And through Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Loving Heavenly Father, we know that uh, we, your children, we never pray alone, but only with all your saints in all the world. And so we pray now together with one heart and mind and voice the prayer that Jesus himself taught us to pray. As we say together, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, both now and forever. Amen. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Mark and his girlfriend were walking in a downtown area, and as we were at, come to a light, uh, on the sidewalk, they waited for the light to turn, and uh, as they began to step out, they noticed that there was a vintage muscle car uh, just to their left uh, with music playing very loudly. And as they stepped out into the crosswalk to cross over to the other side of the street, suddenly the engine of this car revved and lurched toward them, right at them. And so in fear and, and anxiety and, and uh, being quite afraid, not knowing what exactly was happening, Mark pulls his girlfriend back to the curb, only to look around to see 
the driver of the car pointing at them and laughing. He'd done this on purpose just to scare them. As you might imagine, if you're like any one of us, Mark had curse words wanting to fly out of his mouth that were going through his head. He wanted to scream at the driver. He wanted to throw rocks at the windshield. What about you? When you're treated unfairly, unjustly, treated poorly, how do you tend to react? See, when we're, when we're mistreated, our, our instinct, we're, our go-to usually is to react defensively. We want to get even and punish the person who acted so toward us. But even if we don't do that, we haven't always had the courage to fight back directly. We may want to vent our frustrations in other ways, bringing other people into the mix. Can you believe what that guy in the car did to us? We'll go sideways in our pain, hoping to enlist others to take up our offense. See, the impulse is responsible. This type of impulse is responsible for splitting so many groups and families of people. See, a lot of times, though, it feels good, and it is good, to do good. We're often rewarded for being kind. Where You greet someone, they greet you back. You step in to help someone, and they say thank you. You give love, and you receive love. But it's not always that way. What about those times when doing the right thing, doing right, means you get done wrong? You treat someone kindly and they're rude in return. You blow the whistle at work. You, you do something that's ethical and you know is right and suddenly that promotion you were up for is off the table. Or you might even lose your job. You do something that you know is right in the midst of others who want to do wrong and you might get mistreated and a friendship might be lost. See, when we're mistreated, it can feel like we're being singled out. Why did I do to deserve this? Why me? See, we all have freedom, and human freedom in the midst of that pain, pain really is inevitable. We choose to do good and others benefit. We choose wrong, and both we and others often suffer. And so we have to ask ourselves, are we going to let resistance to doing good and difficulties define us or will we, will we get the resistance to move forward? It's like that well-known cartoon we've probably already seen in one shape or form or another when we go with our gut on this one. Man's at work and he's berated by his boss. He goes home fuming mad and he takes it out on his wife and he yells at her. She storms out of the house screaming and finds her little daughter just playing in the front yard and she gets upset and scolds her. With the daughter in tears, now frustrated and upset herself, goes, finds her little brother and pinches him until he screams. The little brother in turn goes and kicks the dog who then finds the cat and bites it. And on and on and on it goes. See, when we're treated unjustly, we often, we project that and we transmit that. We just kick that can literally and figuratively down the road and transmit our pain to others. And evil perpetuates evil until someone decides to break the cycle. See, in the Sermon on the Mount that we heard, Jesus teaches us this. He said, Blessed are those, blessed are those who are persecuted, who are mistreated for righteousness' sake, for doing good, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of falsehoods against you, on my account, Jesus says, rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For in the same way, they persecuted the prophets who were before you. See, Jesus demonstrates a radical alternative to our knee-jerk, our typical response. And so this week in the Beatitudes, this began the Sermon on the Mount, these nine pathways we've come really to the most counterintuitive, the most perhaps difficult and countercultural one of them that Jesus instructs his disciples. See, just like other of the uh, Beatitudes, Jesus explains things a little bit further and expands on them. In verse 38, just a few verses later of chapter 5 in the Gospel of Matthew, he says, You've heard that it was said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I tell you, do not resist an evil person. 
If anyone slaps you on the right cheek, turn to them the other cheek also. And if anyone wants to sue you and take your shirt, hand over your coat as well. If anyone forces you to go one mile, go with them two miles. Give to the one who asks you, and do not turn away from the one who wants to borrow from you. I could just imagine it now, seeing that audience, a little teenage boy in that first group listening to Jesus say these words, and the week he perhaps had before, where he's minding his own business and he's tapped on the shoulder by the flat blade of a sword. And he turns around and looks into the face of the despised Roman soldier who said, here boy, take this bag and none of your lip or you're going to get the boot. See, under Roman occupation at this time, there was the Roman riot of impressment. The soldier had the right to ask the boy to carry his bag for a mile, to run an errand for a mile, to guide this Roman soldier for a mile. And so the boy, picking up the bag, carries it exactly one mile, drops the bag in the dust, mutters something, and returns home. See, everyone in Jesus' audience that day would have understood the illustrations Jesus was using in Matthew 5. But how'd they react to what he was saying? Because really, he's saying this. Do differently than expected. Do more than is demanded. Go the second mile. And I can imagine their reaction would be very much similar to ours if someone was abusing and, uh, and misusing and mistreating us. Yeah, I'll go that second mile. I'll go as far as my feet could throw him and kick him. But Jesus sought to help us understand what the nature of his kingdom is really like. What it's like to live as a part of God's kingdom. That it's for us. It's for those who are mistreated and abused. Not just those who are always on top and have all the power all the time. But even those who are mistreated and abused. The kingdom of God is for us as well. And as a part of that kingdom, we live... In God's kingdom ways. See, in verses 38 and 39, Jesus quotes from one of the oldest law codes ever, the, the Code of Hammurabi, based on the principle known as Lex Talionis, which we would say this for that, or you might have heard it this way, an eye for an eye. And what Jesus says is as instructive as it is startling. Giving back what you got when others abuse you and mistreat you is not the way of God's kingdom. Those who are done wrong for doing right do not fight fire with fire, Jesus says. In other words, we don't govern our actions toward others by their reactions to us. Oh, and that slap in the face and turn the other cheek, it's the Lord's way of saying we're to live above the desire for revenge and the spirit of retaliation that's so characteristic of our society. You say something I don't like on social media, well, I'm flamethrowing you on Twitter and I'm trying to get everybody to cancel you in your whole life. On the idea of the shirt and the coat, it teaches us to go beyond what is demanded of us. And that also giving is related to a life of stewardship of a whole life as well. See, Jesus brings a picture of his kingdom to life. Do more than is demanded of you. You know, we're told that at times, I think historically, Jewish people, Jewish boys during this Roman occupation, they would stake out know exactly down to the step where one mile from their house was, and they wouldn't go any further beyond the stake. And let's be honest, quite often we do exactly that. What's expected of us, and no more. When I was a kid, I, I tried to you know, be upset with my boys, but really they're just the same as me. I asked them to do the dishes in the sink and, and clean them and just leave it at that, and it's only the dishes that happen to make it in the sink that get clean and put in the dishwasher. There could be a fork, a spoon, a knife, a plate, a cup, just beside, just outside of the sink, still there in the morning. And as upset and frustrating as that is for me, I did the same thing myself. We all have ways of doing no more than what's expected. And if we're one of those people that's abused, especially abused for doing what's wrong, What's expected in our culture, in our society, is to give what we've been given. To get back and to get even. But Jesus shows us a different way. You see, I don't, also I don't want you to, do not, don't hear 
what I'm not saying. I'm not saying that, it, it could sound like I'm saying, but I'm not saying that we should stay in abusive situations or that we should just be people who let everyone just walk all over us just on spec and, and go to look for that. And here I think it's important that the order of the Beatitudes might be instructive for us. See, what if the Beatitudes are kind of a progressive map? Think about where we've been, where Jesus begins by telling us, blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are those who mourn. Blessed are the meek. Blessed are the peacemakers. Blessed are those who are persecuted. See, first, we trust in the Creator's care. And then we open ourselves to be willing to lament that sometimes that's all there is to do. And we wait for God's comfort. And we affirm our integrity and our worth. And we embrace the fact that we all have power, but true power is meekness. Meekness is not weakness, but power and meekness is power under control. And we receive mercy, and we respond with compassion. We tell the truth, and we live single-heartedly, wholeheartedly. That we want to have undivided hearts to revere God's name. Not having a heart that pulls us in our will and our thoughts and our desires in too many different directions, but single-mindedly, single-heartedly be devoted to God. We reach past differences to find common ground. And when we do that, then we can be free to surrender to suffering. Especially that suffering that comes when we're done wrong for doing right. See, only then can you affirm all these realities that we can confidently resist evil in ways that aren't an eye for an eye. See, true surrender in God's kingdom comes from a place of strength and, and confidence and courage. And it's not in ourselves. When I'm faced with difficulties, I could be as scaredy cat as anybody. But my confidence and my strength and my courage comes from the God that I've grown close to in Jesus Christ. See, what is the deeper reality in all of this that, we can, that can empower us to bless those who mistreat us? It's that we're a part, realize that you're a part of a cosmic struggle between good and evil. And realize that in the end, evil's power is broken in love. In Jesus' resurrection, we see that love is stronger than hate. And friends, no pain in this world has the last word. But it is God's love that does so. And it can be difficult to care for those and not respond in kind when you've been mistreated, but knowing that you're blessed, you're free to bless as well. And so if you're having difficulty blessing someone who's mistreated you, think of this. At, at times I can think of a picture of them in my mind. And as I see a picture of who they are, I speak this blessing. May you find peace. May you embrace goodness and love. And may you experience what is most real and true in Jesus Christ. Keep doing good. Do no harm. Stay in love with God. Blessed are those who are persecuted, who are mistreated for doing right, for righteousness' sake. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Those with ears to hear, let them hear what the Spirit says to His church today. Friends, also now we are reminded not only of the communion of those of us who are part of God's kingdom, but that God invites all to join Him around His table. And so we have the opportunity now to share in a time of remembering the God who overcame evil with good, hatred with love, and that God's life wins over death and darkness as we share together in Holy Communion. And so now if you would take your bread and your cup and take your worship guide, we'll consecrate our time of Holy Communion together. And if you would, read aloud those words that will be on the screen. Christ our Lord invites to His table all who love Him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, 
We confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. And we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Friends, hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. May the Lord be with us. We lift up our hearts to the Lord. Let us give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of His suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which He gave Himself up for us, He took bread, and after giving thanks... To you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup. He gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. For this is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, Father, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ is with us. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on we who are gathered in your name, In this and all places your people gather in the union of worship this day, and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by His blood. By Your Spirit make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory, and we feast at His heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. And all God's people say, Amen. Well, friends, if you would, now take the bread with the words, the body of Christ given for you, and then dip it into the cup with the words, the blood of Christ given for you. body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ given for you.
For as now we have the time and the opportunity to continue our worship through the giving of our financial gifts as a way of telling God that we trust him with all that we have and all that we are, and we trust him after giving this to take care of us with all that is left. And we trust him to care for our future, knowing that all good things come from his hands. And there are two ways that you can make an offering to God through his church today. You can mail your offering to Fall Branch United Methodist Church at P.O. Box 86, Fall Branch, Tennessee, zip code 37656. Or if you prefer, you can make an offering online by going to holston.org forward slash church offering and choosing the Appalachian District in the first pull-down menu and then Fall Branch United Methodist Church in the second pull-down menu. And from there, you may go with your debit or credit card to designate the amount that you would want to give as an offering today. So out of gratitude for all that God's done for us, let's now make our offering prayer of gratitude. Would you pray with me? God of light and beauty, every gift is from you. Even our ability to give is a blessing of your love. And we offer you what we have and all that we are. We pray that you would use our gifts, use our lives to give birth to a world of righteousness where none are in need and where all draw close to your grace. And all God's people say, Amen. Well, friends, I'm so glad that we've been able to be together during this time. I hope that something that we've done together, wherever you, we might be as we are around, this, you're part of God's table, of Jesus' table here at the Fall Branch and I met this church, that you've been blessed, that God has spoken to you. I pray if you listen, you will hear him. The echoes of what he's done with us and through us in this time will carry you forward. And so now let's have our benediction. May we go forth in peace, and may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And all God's people say, Amen. Friends, have the rest of a blessed day.